These were the days of the Avalanche rock stars. Players that you may recognize, Chris Lasoya, Jeremy Somm, Steve Rabakoff, Weasel, Rocky Cagnoni, Travis Lemansky, John Richardson, Mark Knopp, Todd Martinez, Ed Poorman, and Richmond Italia. Traveling the world, winning seven-man and 10-man tournaments, becoming some of the best-known professional paintball players of their day. During the 2001 Campaign Cup in the United Kingdom, the extra player put down their gun and picked up a camera to film a part of their amazing run. You know, Chris just spent the first 10 minutes lecturing everybody on the team that he wasn't going to do that. <laughs> and look where the fuck he is again. <laughs> it's like, there's no listening to him. Hey Chris, listen to this recording later. Remember how you said you weren't going to do the same thing? <laughs> While many teams and players have moved to electronic paintball guns like Angels and Shocker models, there were still autocockers to be found on large sub-airball fields, which were still using fans and tubes to transfer air from bunker to bunker. In many cases, bunkers were larger and often further apart than recent paintball layouts. While game times were also longer, encouraging a mix of sneaky and well-timed movement gun battles and holding down lanes in key bunkers, while front and midfield players looked for opportunities to break open the game. The format was a little different. Each player was worth points and teams played with the goal of max scores, eliminating all the opponents and hanging the opposing team's flag without losing any bodies of their own along the way. After the preliminary rounds, teams with the highest scores moved to a round-robin final. Each team played each other before the winner was determined by the highest final score. game towards the end there you had uh, us playing the Russians and Travis's gun went down it was a one-on-one -on -one and gun wasn't working and you're not gonna win a one-on-one -on -one when your gun's not working but it didn't matter we still had enough points to win the event so in that also in that era was when the Russian Legion first started coming up and started making a name for themselves so it was this big rivalry with Avalanche Team USA against the Russians and it, it was good it was good for paintball uh, they definitely were doing some good things and, and we were doing good things, but it didn't matter, we always won, so. Okay. With a malfunctioning marker, Travis Lemansky attempted heroically to hold off an incarceration of the now famed Russian Legion, leading to a final round loss. Avalanche's other wins in the final round gave them the victory for the event. One of the many during the superstar years of paintball's greatest teams. Superstar Lasoya. 
uh, that run, we had a, um, when we just finished that event, we finished uh, five, winning five in a row at the time. Us the money! Yeah! I love that shit! That's fucking my name in Danish. <laughs> there you go. Here. Uh, we were built uh, by the KGB to take the international paintball circuit under control. <laughs> so, uh, thank you very much. I have nothing to say. This was a great tournament. Real, uh, we are getting, the paintball is getting better and better. And we are trying to come with Russians Go. Thanks a lot.